Hello and welcome to day two of Arctic Daily, which is what I ended up calling this mini series of uh, daily videos throughout July. Today I am. It's still summer, as you saw. If you saw yesterday's video, it um, was the first day of summer on July first. Today is July second, and there is still summer, which means that there are going to be at least two days of summer this year, which is great. I'm currently sitting indoors. I was planning on doing this outside, but then my neighbor started uh, cutting the grass because, well, you have to do that when it's not raining. <laughs> And it's been raining for over a month, so um, yeah, there's lots of stuff going on outside, so I decided to go inside instead. This is in my living room. This is the sofa where I have done the last couple of my podcasts. So I'm just sitting here, I'm knitting on my Coos cardigan. This is the second sleeve, and if you can hear the needles, that's just because I'm working on double point needles instead of magic blue because that's my preferred method of making fewer stitches in the round. But today I thought that I was going to talk with you about how I started knitting. And I'm drinking Pepsi because I don't really like or I started drinking coffee but I don't drink that much coffee and on days like this Pepsi is just so much better. Anyway, how I started knitting. It seems like many people think that because I am Norwegian that I have been knitting my whole life. I haven't. We learned to knit quite early. I learned to knit in school, but I learned to knit even before that. When I was still in kindergarten, my grandma taught me how to knit. At that point, I thought it was super cool because my grandma did it. And my grandma, if you have been following this podcast for a while, you will know that my grandma was awesome. She was the best crafter in the world. She did everything and she was just amazing at it. Uh, unfortunately, she, she passed away three years ago or two and a half years ago and I miss her every day. Anyway, she taught me how to knit when I was still in kindergarten and I wanted to learn how to knit. It was me that asked her if she could teach me and she tried to teach me, but my little hands just couldn't do it. I, it. I couldn't make anything. I just, yeah, and I gave up pretty quickly. Then when we started, uh, like in school, when we are in children's school, barnes school, we learn how to knit and we learn how to do lots of other fiber crafts as well. We have to take a sewing machine certificate, which I did. You have to, you kind of, even if you don't get anything right, you get the certificate at the end. But we learned how to knit, we learned how to, we learned how to sew, we learned how to do some basic knit work, and then we learned how to do some basic woodwork. Embroidery, cross stitch is quite a big part of it. I have embroidered a little tablecloth that says mama or papa, mama and papa too. Uh, it's basically mommy and daddy and my, and you just, you wrote, I wrote the names in, or I wrote mama in cross stitch and then you embroidered different kinds of stitches around it like as etching just to, uh, just to let the kids try different kind of embroidery stitches. But we learned how to knit as well. And um, I have to say that I hated it. Not just did I hate knitting, I hated embroidery, sewing machine. Oh no. That was it was like the worst thing ever. It's fiber crafts. It's it was annoying, it was slow, I couldn't do it right. And basically I just hated it. It was the worst classes in school after gymnastics, which was even worse. I did kind of enjoy woodwork, but that's mostly because the teacher didn't really pay attention, so we got to do whatever we wanted. But fiber crafts, uh -uh, not my thing at all. So when I was, I didn't need anything outside of those classes. We didn't get anything in homework. But when I was after I'd gone through, I think it's high school, when you are between 16 and 19. Uh, when I was in my last year, 
I kind of wanted to start meeting. I had moved out from my parents' house. I lived with a friend and we didn't have TV and we didn't really know what to do. So we started meeting. And I remember us calling because <laughs> I, I don't understand why we didn't just Google it. But I remember us calling her mom because my mom doesn't knit. Um, and we called her mom and she explained to us over the phone how to do the pearl stitch. And we started knitting, we were going to knit socks and we knit, uh, knit two pearl clip around and around for until we got to the heel. And then we realized that we didn't know how to do the heel, so we just continued knitting two by two rib around and around and around. I think I think I had like yeah, probably two meters of two by two rib, which I threw away a year later or something. And that's it. I did a little bit of that, and then I stopped knitting. I was about eighteen at the time, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen. I was probably just turned eighteen. And I stopped, I brought it with me when I moved anything, but it was like two skeins of yarn and when I moved again, half a year later, I just threw it out because I hadn't been knitting anything. Then I moved to Tromsø, which is about a three hour drive from here. I was then turned, it was the year I turned 19 in the summer. Yeah. And that fall or autumn, I'm not really sure, I was supposed to check that, but I forgot it. This was in... Summer 2009, I moved to Tromsø, and then in early spring, or maybe it was just before Christmas 2009-2010, I was just browsing the internet and I came across a blog, and it was the blog of a blog of a wee bit knitting, Lena, and she had such gorgeous photos of a shawl that she had knitted. It was the Harumani shawl. I remember it as if it was yesterday. It was just so amazing. I think it was purple. And I went back to look at that shawl multiple times. And she had knitted lots of shawls and the photos were so inspiring. And I just love that blog. And I followed her for a while. Even though I didn't knit, I started reading knitting blogs. And I kind of wanted to learn how to knit, but I didn't really know where to start. So I never went through with it and she was part of a forum on the internet which is unfortunately does lo lo which unfortunately does lo no longer exist but it was the Ufermelt. It was a Norwegian forum. Um, she linked to all the blogs and they all looked really inspiring. And then one day my brother had been visiting us for a couple of days and I was going to follow him for to the bus back home. And after I followed him to the bus, I was waiting for my bus back home. And it was winter, it was cold, it was <laughs> it was in the Arctic. And I think it was like 20 minutes and to wait until wait for the bus. And there was this like Orleans, it's a store that sells like everything they have, a little bit of fabric, interior stuff, curtains, stuff like that. That was the closest door to my bus stop and I used to when I was waiting for the bus I used to just go in there and browse but I never really bought anything and I kind of felt like I was hanging out in that store just waiting for the bus and yeah I didn't like that yeah I don't know it's just it didn't feel right so I went across the store across the street to go into another store it was a yarn store just to browse around and see what they had and the moment I got in there, it was kind of like, it was not this really welcoming atmosphere. I felt like I had to buy something. I was brushing around a little bit and I felt like the lady that was at work there was kind of following me. And yeah, it was not a nice feeling, but then I told her just because I felt like I had to, I had to buy something. Um, because of the way she was looking at me, kind of guilt tripping into buying, guilt tripping me into buying. But then I, I told her that I want to learn how to knit socks. Can you help me? And she gave me a skein of some purple multicolored sock yarn, a Swedish recipe style pattern, because that was the easiest pattern she had to understand. And it was a heel flapping gusset, 
and then she gave me needles and it was nipple needles those were just launched and she gave me of course the most expensive needles she had in the store and i went home and i started knitting i got to the heel and i got in trouble with knitting the heel and i joined ufermat where there was just so much inspiration and yeah that was basically the beginning i started knitting those socks I don't know what I did wrong, but I think I knitted the heel twice, or I knitted the heel flap twice, I'm not sure, but it, it it was weird, but it, they worked. Then I got to the toe, uh, and it was just decreasing, then pulling the thread through the remaining stitches, pull that tight, and so in the end. And I did that, of course I did exactly as Patton said, the, I just didn't know how to sew in the end, so they basically unraveled in quite a short time. But by that time I had started knitting more because, well, Ufermet. And if you go to my Ravelry page, Ravelry page, you can see, if you go to 2010, you can see the projects that I made in my first year. The photos are not really good. The first project that is out there is this Luma Tuffler. I'm going to try to pop a picture up on the screen or I can show you here. Luma Tuffler, which is basically a little tuffler. I don't know, the slippers. Those were really easy. You just started on one side. It did increases and decreases and nips and pearls. And then about, I don't know, about a month into it, a new yarn store opened in Tromsø and she was just, it was Bunningen on Jakna, it still exists if you are in Tromsø, I really do recommend going to Bunningen. And the lady running it, it was quite smaller at the time than it is now and she was just amazing, she was so inspiring, she was really helpful and she had a sale and I remember coming home like this with just bags, lots of bags of yarn. And my boyfriend at the time was saying, why do you even buy this yarn? You're not going to knit in two weeks. You, this is going to pass. You know it's going to pass. Everything does. And it didn't. But in a month or two, I started knitting the Haruni shawl, which was the first shawl that I seen on Fröken Bartegak's podcast. And I have a photo of it. It's not a good photo. But you can see I even went outside to try to take nice photos because I was so inspired by the box. And it's stockinette instead of the original pattern. It's just a leaf pattern and it's just so amazing. And I felt that if I could do this, and it wasn't really that hard, if I could do this, I could do anything. I needed a couple of shawls. I needed a sweater that year. I needed cables that year. I remember anything. I think I need like 20 pairs of Bella's mittens. I knitted hat and this is also a project from my first year of knitting which is one of the things that I'm most proud of ever doing. It was supposed to be knitted in Tarsia but I didn't understand how that worked so I just knitted the sweater, sewed on the arms and then I embroidered the dragon with the duplicate stitch so that's what, that was quite a bit of work. And after that I was just completely hooked. I haven't put down anything at all. Uh, and now I knit all the time. I even work in the yarn store and I dye yarn and knitting is basically most of my life. And I recently talked with a friend about this. Like, people who don't knit, what do they do? It's like, when people who don't knit are on the internet, where do they go? I remember my brother joining Instagram and I told him, what are you going to do on Instagram? You're not a knitter. Of course, <laughs> I realized that there are other stuff on the internet. I just, I don't understand what people who don't knit do with their, do with their life, do it. Yeah. So that was the story of how I started knitting and that was today's video. And if you have anything you want me to talk about or show you, please let me know in the comment section down below. And I. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'm going to go out and enjoy the sun before I go to work and yeah, have a nice day and I hope you have a really really nice summer. Bye.